ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take his da'wah to the next level after he was preaching underground and secretly. And so he told him, he commanded him to start preaching to his family members, the people of Quraysh. And so the Prophet ﷺ went to Mount Safa. He climbed it and he called on the leaders of Quraysh to gather. And so when they came and gathered around him, he asked them, if I was to tell you that there is an enemy about to attack you from behind this mountain, would you believe me? And so they said, of course we would believe you. مَا جَرَّبْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكَذِبِ they, they said, we, we have never known you to ever lie. We've known you to be a trustworthy person. Why wouldn't we believe you? And so the Prophet ﷺ then said, فَأَنَا نَذِيرٌ لَكُمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ عَذَابٍ شَدِيدٍ Then I am proclaiming to you here on this day, that I am a plain, clear warner to you of a great, intense punishment that awaits you. And in another narration, he called on each, on each one of the family members of Quraysh. Ya Bani Fulan, anqidu anfusakum min nar He called on each family telling them, save yourselves from the fire. Save yourselves from the fire. And so my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us to live in this dunya, to recognize Him, to know Him, to recognize what He expects from us and then to worship Him, to obey Him and not to disobey Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us His power, His might so that those who decide not to obey Him, they would be deterred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us His power, His might, and what He is capable of doing, and what He intends to do with those who decide to disobey Him, and what punishment awaits them. Why? So that they would be deterred. So that they would no, so that they would no longer disobey Him. And so my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us in the Qur'an, 
in precise detail the punishment that awaits the punishment that awaits the people in the hellfire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described every aspect of that in fine detail why so that no one can come on that day and put forward any excuses when they see that punishment before them they won't be able to say ya allah save us from this punishment because you didn't tell us about it save us from this punishment we had no clue about it whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran that these people they will put forward other excuses they will say give us a second chance they will put the blame on others on shaitan on the leaders of kufr but they won't make this excuse why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish until he has made his message clear to us and so my dear brothers and sisters although we have been told about the punishment of the hellfire and we read it and we hear about it through what allah and his messenger have told us the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't just hear about it he was not just told about it but rather he saw it with his own eyes and that's why he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said walladhi nafsi biyadi law ra'aytum ma ra'ayt la dhahiktum qalilan wa la bakaytum kathira he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said swearing by the one in whose hands his soul is in that if you had seen what i have seen meaning of the punishment you would laugh little and cry more and so although we haven't seen the hellfire with our own eyes it doesn't mean it's not real The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about it and he told us that he saw it with his own eyes and there is no one more truthful than him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so let us take a journey let us take a journey to that punishment that awaits the disbelievers and all those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without turning to him in repentance on that day on the day of judgment after everyone is resurrected and the questioning takes place and each and every single one of us are judged and our deeds are weighed on the scales and everyone is given their books either in their right hands or in their left hands and after all the events of that horrific day the disbelievers will be brought the inhabitants of the hellfire will then be brought to stand before the hellfire and it will be brought the hellfire will be brought as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us with 70,000 restraints 70,000 handles with each one of these handles 70,000 angels dragging it and so it's huge it's massive there was once in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was sitting with the companions and they heard a very loud noise and so he asked them do you know what that was they said no ya rasulullah he said that was a stone that was thrown 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the hellfire that was thrown into the hellfire and only now it reached its bottom. And so the hellfire is huge and massive. When it is brought before them and they see it with their own eyes, لَتَرَوُنَّ الجحيم. Allah swore, you will surely see it. لَتَرَوُنَّ الجحيم. ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ And then you will see it with the eye of certainty. In this dunya, some people, their iman shakes, wavers. They're not sure. Why? Because they say that we can't see it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that that doubt, that uncertainty will go away and you will see it with your own eyes. وَجِيَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى And the hellfire will be brought on that day. And at that point, man, he will remember. Meaning he will remember what he did in this life. But what use is him remembering now? يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي He will say, I wish. When he sees the punishment, he'll say, I wish that I had put forward something for my life. Meaning, this life of eternity. But it will be too late. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ قَالُوا, يا قالوا فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ when they will be made to stand over the hellfire on that day. And they see it before their eyes. They will say, we wish that we can now be sent back. And we don't disbelieve in the ayat of our Rabb. And that we are believers. But it will be too late. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا the disbelievers will be brought before the hellfire in groups. Until when they are brought before it, its gates will suddenly open before them. أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا And the keepers of the hellfire, they will say, Were you not warned of this day? Did our messengers not come to you? Did the messengers of Allah not come to you? Explaining to you, reciting to you the ayat of your Lord. And after they admit that yes, they came to us. The answer will be, فَدْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will be told, now enter. Enter the hellfire to remain in there forever. And so picture all of these people who represent the majority of mankind. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that 999 of a thousand people will end up in the hellfire. Only one out of a thousand will be saved and be admitted into Jannah from the time of Adam until the day of resurrection. Imagine all of these people, the majority, the vast majority of mankind, having been gathered to enter into their final, their final abode, their final home. And so after they are thrown into the hellfire, after they are shoved into the hellfire, and all of them enter into it, its gates will then be locked forever. 
And there will be no, there will be absolutely no escape route out of it. And this fire is not like any fire of the dunya. And so all of us are familiar with what fire can do. We can see it. We have heard about it burning. We know how dangerous fire is. It burns. It can reduce you to ashes. But the Prophet ﷺ told us of the fire of the Akhirah that it is only one. It, is, it only represents one of 70 parts of the fire of this dunya. And so it is 70 times more intense and hotter than the fire of this dunya. However, even then, although it will be intense, although it will be extremely painful, it won't reduce them to ashes and it won't kill them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُصْلِهِمْ نَارًا That those who disbelieve in our ayat, we will make them to enter, to, bur to, to be burned by a fire. كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time it burns their skin, we will replace that skin with another skin so that they can continuously taste the punishment. لَهُمْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمَا لَا يُقْضَى عَلَيْهِمْ فَيَمُوتُوا وَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِهَا They will have the fire of Jahannam. It will not it will not bring them to an end. It will not cause them to disappear, to be reduced to ashes. It will not cause them to die, nor, nor will its intensity be reduced in the very least. But not all of them will receive the same level of punishment. And so the Prophet ﷺ told us that for some, the hellfire will reach their ankles. For others, it will reach their knees. For others, it will reach their waists. And for others, it will reach their collarbones. And the least of them, the Prophet ﷺ told us, is a man whose feet he will be given soles to wear of fire that will burn his brains. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ told us that this will be the punishment of his uncle Abu Talib who died as a mushrik. And so what will the inhabitants of the hellfire eat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّ شَجَرَةَ الزَّقُومِ طُعَامُ الْأَثِيمِ كَالْمُهْلِ يَغْلِي فِي الْبُطُونِ كَغَلْيَ الْحَمِيمِ They will be made to eat from the tree of a zakum fruit that will be like like burning oil like molten metal that will boil the bellies like water boil and the Prophet ﷺ told us about this tree. He said that if a drop of a zakum was to descend onto this dunya, it would ruin our livelihood. We wouldn't be able to eat anything. We wouldn't be able to live. And then he ﷺ said, so how about those who this is their only food that they will eat? And then, when they become thirsty and ask for water, 
بماء كالمهلي كالمهلي يشوي الوجوه. And then when they ask for water to quench their thirst, they will be given water that is like boiling oil that will burn the faces. And so none of this food, none of this drink will nourish them. None of it will quench their thirst, but rather it will only add to their anguish. مِنْ وَرَائِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَيُسْقَى مِنْ مَاءٍ صَدِيدٍ يَتَجَرَّعُهُ وَلَا يَكَادُ يُسِيغُهُ They will be given this water to drink. And they will drink it with difficulty. Sipping it with extreme difficulty. Because they need to drink. But at the same time, it's painful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَأْتِيهِ الْمَوْتُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِمَيِّتٍ And as they're drinking that, death comes to them from every side, but yet, but yet they do not die. And so, the pain will be unbearable. Their pain and their anguish will be unbearable. And they will try to look for a way out. They'll try to look for an escape route. كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها من غم أعيدوا فيها Every single time that they try to escape from it out of their anguish, their pain they will be made to return to it. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب وخطيئة فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون My dear brothers and sisters when the people of the hellfire lose all hope and they, find, and they can't find any way to escape they will then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his help رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ They will say, our Lord, allow us to exit from it. And if we go back, meaning to the dunya, and we return to what we used to do, then truly we would be wrongdoers, we would be unjust. What will the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be? قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ He will say, remain in it, despised. And do not talk to me. When they lose hope in addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, and their first wish, it was to return back to the dunya. They asked for it, it was rejected. They will then make a second wish. But this time not turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather turning to the guardian of the hellfire, the angel Malik. And so they will say, Wanadaw, Ya Maliku, Liyakudi Alayna Rabbuk. They will call to Malik. O Malik, 
Ask your Lord to bring us to an end. Ask your Lord to, to make us to cease to exist. The pain is unbearable. Finish it for us. What will the answer be? قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ He will say, you are to stay in it forever. When they lose hope in this wish, to simply die and no longer exist, they will then make a third wish. And that is, they will call upon the other keepers of the hellfire, the other angels. After losing hope in Allah, losing hope in the guardian of the hellfire Malik, they will then call on the other keepers of the hellfire. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمْ أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ they will call on the other keepers of the hellfire. Call upon your Lord. Ask your Lord to lighten, to reduce the punishment for us for one day. They know that this punishment will stay forever. They've lost hope in being able to leave it. So they ask for it to be reduced for just one day. It's unbearable. Give us a break. What will the answer be? قَالُوا أَوَلَمْ تَكُوا تَأْتِيكُمْ أَوَلَمْ تَأْتِيكُمْ أَوَلَمْ تَكُوا تَأْتِيكُمْ رُسُلُكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ They will be asked, didn't messengers come to you with clear proofs? قَالُوا بَلَا They will say, yes, of course. قَالُوا فَدْعُوا وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالِ They will be told, then pray on, continue to call on for the supplication, the calls of the disbelievers are worthless. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it doesn't end there. after the hellfire is filled with its inhabitants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask it, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلْ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ On the day that Allah asks the hellfire, are you full? And so the hellfire will say, do you have more? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, these are only some of the scenes, some of the horrific scenes of the hellfire, which have been mentioned in many verses of the Qur'an and in many ahadith. These are only a few descriptions of the punishment that awaits them. And this punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Qur'an, أُعِدَّتْ kafirin. It has been prepared for who? For the disbelievers. But that does not mean that it is restricted to them. And this is the mistake that many of us make. Thinking that we will be saved from the hellfire. Why? Because the hellfire is only for the kuffar. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. But the reality is that the hellfire is also for the believers who committed major sins in this dunya and deserved that punishment for those major sins. And they left this dunya without having repented from those sins. The only difference is 
that the disbelievers will remain there forever. Whereas these believers, because of their iman, eventually a day will come after they have been purified of their sins. A day will come when they will exit from it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter them into Jannah. And so unfortunately, many of us today, we take it very lightly. We take the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extremely lightly. Thinking that our iman and our good deeds will save us. And yet, we continuously indulge in sin after sin after sin. Thinking that everything will be okay. And so we commit major sins. We look at haram. We indulge in haram. We invest in haram. Our source of income is haram. And yet we think everything is okay. Whereas the salaf of our ummah looked at things completely differently. It's narrated that some of the wives of the Salaf, when they would go out in the morning, when the Salaf would go out in the morning to work for a livelihood, their wives would warn them that beware of what you go out to earn. Beware of your source of income. Because we can bear patiently with poverty, but we won't be able to bear patiently with the hellfire. These were the salaf of our ummah, who actually deserved not to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their iman, for their good deeds from the companions, the tabi'een, the tabi'a tabi'een and yet they feared Allah's punishment in this way and we come today thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save us from the punishment even though we indulge the way we do in his disobedience. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses the believers specifically. For those of us who aren't convinced that the hellfire can also be for the believers, then pay attention to this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses me and you, not the kuffar. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O oh, you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is of men and stones. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us that we should protect ourselves from his punishment from the fire. And so my dear brothers and sisters, the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what will save each and every single one of us from his punishment. And that is the very meaning of a taqwa. Many times taqwa is translated as a fear of Allah. And that's because the meaning of a taqwa as the scholars mention is that it means you place a barrier between yourself and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person who does that, he places a barrier between himself and Allah's punishment. It means that he fears him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he fears Allah's punishment. And so when he thinks of doing something evil, he places the punishment of Allah in front of his eyes. 
that deters him from committing that evil. And so, a taqwa is iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to follow up that iman with righteous good deeds and staying away from evil deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, the people of the hellfire, if we were to closely examine what Allah has told us about them, we find that they were those who in this dunya, they enjoyed themselves. They gave their nafs free reign to control them, to fulfill their desires. Instead of controlling that nafs. And that's because the Prophet ﷺ told us that the hellfire is surrounded by desires. Whereas Jannah, it is surrounded by difficulty, by pain and suffering in this dunya. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, among the things besides taqwa that can help to protect ourselves from the hellfire and from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dua and seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his punishment. And this is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he himself used to seek Refuge in Allah from his punishment. And he used to command the, command the companions to do the same. And yet they were who they were. They had been forgiven all their sins. They had been guaranteed Jannah. They had been guaranteed protection from the hellfire. But yet the Prophet wasallam used to always ask Allah to protect him from it and to protect his family and his ummah from it. And so seeking refuge in the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a means of being protected from it. And so there's a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah has angels that roam about earth looking for a group of people sitting, remembering him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so among the things that Allah asks these angels is, what were my servants, my righteous servants, what were they seeking refuge from? And so the angels say, they were seeking refuge from your fire, ya Allah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them, did they see it? Have they seen the hellfire? So the angels respond, No, Ya Allah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, What if they had seen it? And so the angels, they say, They would become even more fearful of it. They would take even more means to stay away from it. And then, upon hearing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I make you, my angels, witnesses that I have forgiven them all of their sins. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا يَسْأَلُ رَجُلٌ مُسْلِمٌ اللَّهَ الْجَنَّةَ ثَلَاثًا إِلَّا قَالَتِ الْجَنَّةَ اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْهُ اللَّهُمَّ اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْهُ the Prophet ﷺ said that there is no Muslim who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah three times except that Jannah says, O oh Allah, enter him into Jannah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَسْتَجَارَ رَجُلٌ مُسْلِمٌ اللَّهَ النَّارَ ثَلَاثًا إِلَّا قَالَتِ النَّارَ اللَّهُمَّ أَجِرْهُ and there is no Muslim 
who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from the hellfire three times, except that the hellfire says, O oh Allah, protect him from it. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our family members and all of the believers from his punishment, from the hellfire. هذا وصلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على نبيكم محمد بن عبد الله كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل في علاه فقال تعالى قولا كريما يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد ورض اللهم عن خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم ارفع عنا الوباء والغلاء والزلازل وسوء المحن والفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون